everything inside me. This is 1932 Soviet poster, which reads, 8th of March is the day of the rebellion of the working women against the kitchen slavery. Say no to the oppression and babbitry of the household work. March 8, International Women's Day, originated in the USSR. From Wikipedia. Following the October Revolution in 1917, the Bolshevik Alexandra Kolontai persuaded Vladimir Lenin to make March 8, International Women's Day, an official holiday in the Soviet Union. Kolontai believed that, like the state, the family unit would wither away once the second stage of communism became a reality. She viewed marriage and traditional families as legacies of the oppressive property rights-based egoist past. This proves that communism is a fait accompli in the West. By controlling credit, central bankers also control business, government, culture, and media. The Satanist goal is the destruction of Christian Western civilization and the enslavement dispossession of mankind. The Illuminati subject us to the same social engineering as the USSR. Take a look at the corporate sponsors. The central bankers only need to own 3 to 5% of the stock to control a corporation. Feminism is designed to undermine Western society by breaking up the family. Similarly, diversity, migration, miscegenation, pornography, and gender dysphoria are designed to destroy the West. The Goyim are oblivious to this relentless occult attack because the MSM portrays it as progressive instead of suicidal. Maybe when they lose their toys, the Goyim will take notice. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. International Women's Day is a long-time communist propaganda tool. What does it say when an official Soviet holiday is enshrined in our mainstream culture? Clearly, communism isn't dead, it has just morphed into other forms like feminism. It confirms Norman Dodd's famous claim that Ford Foundation president, Rowan Gaither, told him, in 1954, that the agenda was to socially engineer US life so that, that it can be comfortably merged with the Soviet Union as part of banker-controlled world government. Every year the supposedly capitalist media echo the old Soviet bromides about women's oppression, and every year I post this rebuttal. Women's Day pretends to celebrate women, but the poster near my Winnipeg home shows an ugly surly shrew brandishing a hammer. She looks demonically possessed. The caption reads, if I only had a hammer. She'd what? hit men over the head, tear down society, smash women who want husbands and children. This isn't far-fetched. Under the dance notice, the poster actually says, come smash patriarchy at midnight. She doesn't look like she has much to fear from a man. Women participating in the march are asked to bring your hard hats, tool belts, safety vests, and ideas for change. Typically communists celebrate women by redefining them out of existence, as males, in other words, carpenters and pipifitters. Through its feminist surrogate, communists have stripped women of a secure and honored social identity as wives and mothers, and made them workers and sexual commodities, hostages to the economy, psyops, and the ravages of age. Obviously, this day is not about recognizing women for their grace, beauty, charm, and intelligence. It is about cultivating a false sense of grievance and entitlement in order to manipulate them. They use the same tactic with Jews, blacks, students and workers, and harness these groups to their agenda. The ultimate goal is to concentrate all wealth and power in the central banking cartel, which is colonizing the whole world. The real meaning of change the world is the establishment of a totalitarian new world order.
International Women's Day is hate against women and society, perpetrated by the traitorous banker colonial establishment, which includes most feminist politicians, educators and the mass media. Women who participate are dupes and useful idiots. It is a vestige of communist popular front movements, first organized in the 1930s, to ensnare naive idealistic people, using feel-good platitudes like equality, peace and human rights. These rubes didn't know that the movements were funded and run by Moscow. The purpose was to alienate the intelligentsia from their own society and make them amenable to the communist agenda, ultimately world government. This seems to have largely succeeded. Communism is about divide and rule. International Women's Day began in Copenhagen by the Socialist International to promote women's rights. As the poster on the right indicates, it was celebrated in Soviet Russia. Here is a manifesto for International Women's Day published in the German Die Communist in March 2, 1921, the source from Weimar Republic Sourcebook, 1995. To all working women. You who make demands and struggle count in the millions. In all countries, where the disinherited surge forward under the sign of communism against the exploiting and subjugating power of capitalism. On International Women's Day, mothers filled with pain, housewives bent with worry, exhausted working women, clerical workers, teachers and small property holders, flow together. Women's Day is designed to make women feel oppressed. For example, a page of gender facts tells them that women do two-thirds of the world's work but get only 10% of the world's income. Thus, Western women, the most favored generation in history, get a chip on their shoulder vicariously. Women are brainwashed to think their interests are separate from their own fathers, husbands, brothers and sons. Thousands of events are planned around the world. For example, at the Unitarian Church in London, Ontario. An organization for Afghanistan women and girls will honor and celebrate our local women with music, singing, dancing, and refreshments. All women and girls are welcome. Free event. Sounds lesbian to me. In San Francisco, there will be a cocktail party and movie to highlight the plight of the women of Gaza. What about the men and boys of Afghanistan and Gaza? Don't they count? In the name of equality, these communist dupes are practicing inequality. By breaking up families, they will leave Muslim women and girls more vulnerable than ever. This time-worn communist Egyptrib is proof we live in a closet communist society. Most people are not socialist, let alone communist. As long as a secret Illuminati clique is allowed to control government credit, subvert nations and plot world government, society is complicit in its own destruction. We will have no one to blame but ourselves. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This everything inside me channel, see you on the next video.